Today I'm gonna to show you how to use Google Tag Manager to install your Facebook Pixel and set up conversion events. So you could just as easily install your Facebook Pixel manually, but I like Tag Manager because you get to set everything up inside of one tool. So in addition to Facebook, you can set up your analytics account, your Google ad account, and other accounts as well. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm inside of a Facebook ad manager account right now, and we're gonna to go to business tools, click on events manager. It's gonna take us to a page that looks like this. We wanna make sure that we're in the data sources section in the overview tab, and then we're gonna click on add events, and then from a new website. If you don't see that same screen, it might be because you haven't created a Facebook pixel already. Uh, so you'll be prompted to create a new Facebook pixel. It, may, it might look a little bit different than what you saw there, but you should get to a page that looks like this where it asks if you wanna use a partner integration to install your pixel or to just install it manually. So I'm gonna say install code manually. It's gonna take me to a page where I can copy my base code. So I'm gonna click this green button. Now it's copied to my clipboard. Now we're gonna to go to Google Tag Manager, which is where we're going to install this code. So I'm making the assumption that you already have Google Tag Manager installed on your site. If you don't and you're unfamiliar with Google Tag Manager, I have another tutorial which you can click on the cards above or the description below to go watch where I talk about how to get started with Tag Manager. So if you're familiar with the tool, it works on uh, variables, triggers, and tags. All we need to worry about here is the tag section. So I'm gonna click on new and create a new tag. I'm gonna name this Facebook Pixel. I'm gonna click on tag configuration. There's no default Facebook Pixel tag to choose from, so we're gonna select custom HTML. And then I'm just gonna simply paste that Facebook base code inside of that dialog there. And now we need to select a trigger. I'm gonna click onto this. And uh, this was created previously in another video. And then this one is default to your Tag Manager account. So this should already be in here. We're gonna click on all pages. And so what this means is that when this trigger happens, meaning when any page view is fired, when anybody visits any page on your site, it's going to fire this script, which is your Facebook pixel. So that's exactly what we want. We're gonna click on save. And you'll notice we have one workspace change that's outstanding. So as it stands, this pixel is not actually published live to our site. So to publish it, we're gonna click on submit. We can name this series of changes that we're about to publish uh, if we want, or we can just say publish and skip. And once this completes, our pixel is now going to be installed on our site. So this is the site that I just installed this on. I have a Chrome extension called Facebook Pixel Helper, which is free and if you install it, it comes up with this little green dialogue that shows you if there is or is not a pixel installed on any website. So in this case, we can see that there is a pixel installed. And if I look at the pixel ID here and I go back to my events manager and I go back a page, I can see my pixel ID right here, which should match the pixel ID on my site. So that's a quick way to verify that it is installed correctly. Uh, if it's not, then it won't show up or it might show you some kind of error. So as it stands right now, our Facebook Pixel is installed. It's tracking website traffic on every page of our site, but we don't have any conversion events that are set up. So I'm gonna show you now how we can do that. So there's a lot of different ways that you can fire Facebook conversion events. For myself, I run a lot of lead generation campaigns for clients where we'll send traffic from Facebook to a landing page where we have a form for somebody to opt in. After they complete that form, they'll be redirected to a thank you page. And so in that case, I find that the easiest way to trigger a Facebook conversion event is simply based on the page URL of the thank you page that they're redirected to after they opt in. So let's say in this example, I'm just on my blog page on my website, but let's say this was the thank you page that traffic was redirected to after they opted in and completed a form on our landing page. So what's unique about this page is the page path URL. It's got this word blog in it, which no other page on my site has. So I can use this to fire a Facebook conversion event and send that information back to Facebook. Meaning, the only people who are gonna reach this page in our example are people who complete the form. Otherwise, nobody else is gonna reach that thank you page. Therefore, when people visit that page, we can use that to fire a conversion event and tell Facebook that that person has opted in successfully from our Facebook ad campaign. And so what I'm gonna do is go back to Tag Manager. We're gonna to go to Triggers and Create New. And so we need to create a trigger which tells our Tag Manager account when people have completed that conversion event or when people have reached that thank you page. I'm gonna name this Facebook event and lead because this is the standard conversion event that I want to trigger when people are on this page. I'm gonna click on trigger configuration. 
I'm gonna click on page views. We don't want it to be all page views because this would fire on every single page on our site. So I'm gonna select some page views. I'm gonna select the variables and find page URL contains blog. So this means that any page on our site that contains the word blog in the URL, whenever somebody visits that page, it's going to fire this pixel event that we're about to set up. So the risk here is that if you have multiple pages that have the word blog in it, then you risk firing this conversion event on multiple pages when it shouldn't be. So you wanna make sure that the URL of your thank you page is unique. We're gonna click save. We're gonna to go to tags. And now we're gonna set up the script that's fired and sends information back to our Facebook ad account. So we're gonna click new. We're gonna name this Facebook event lead. Click on tag configuration. And again, select custom HTML. And now we need to enter the Facebook tracking code that sends this information back to Facebook. And that looks like this. So you've got these opening and closing scripts and then this tiny little piece of code right here, which is tracking an event and the event name is lead. And so if you go to this page here, or if you just Google uh, specifications for Facebook pixel standard events, it'll give you this page and it's gonna show you the tracking code event for each of the website actions that people can take. So in this case, we're using lead because that's the marketing objective that we've selected for our Facebook ad campaign. So if you're optimizing for a different event, um, like one of these other ones, then you would want to make sure that you select that correct matching event. So in this case, you can see that um, the lead code is FBQ track lead that matches what we have here. And you just want to make sure that you add these opening and closing scripts. We're going to select trigger and then select that uh, trigger that we just selected. And so what's happening now is that once this trigger happens, uh, meaning whenever people visit a page where the page URL contains the word blog, then it's going to um, run this script, which because we have our Facebook pixel now installed on our site, is gonna send this information back to our Facebook account, which is going to register a conversion event. Now it's gonna be logged inside of our ad account. It's gonna match it to any users that have gone to our website uh, from our paid traffic, and we'll be able to measure those results. And so we have two workspace changes now that haven't been published to our site. And so before we publish them, we can actually test this in Tag Manager. So I'm gonna click on Preview. And what this is gonna do is open up a um, Google Tag Assistant, which is going to allow us to test and examine the different variables and tags that are being fired, uh, just to make sure that everything is set up and firing correctly. So we're gonna enter the URL that we want to examine. So first of all, we're gonna examine the homepage, which is not where our Facebook um, event is being fired, but our Facebook pixel is being fired. And so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. All right, so it opened up that page in a new tab. In the bottom right, we see this little dialogue that says debugger connected. And in this other tab, we have the tag assistant. So this is just a tool that allows us to examine how our uh, triggers and tags are set up so that we can make sure that everything is set up correctly. I have another video that goes into more detail on how to use this debugger tool. You can click in the card above or in the description below to learn more about that. But basically, uh, the first thing I'll point out is at the top we have these different Google containers. The first one's analytics, which is installed, so it's recognizing that. And then the second one is tag manager. So make sure that you're selected, uh, selecting tag manager. And now we can see a summary of all of the tags, variables, um, and then which tags were actually fired and which ones were not based on the different events that are happening. So we haven't actually clicked onto this page in any way. You can see if I click on, then it'll register that event and we can click onto it and see you know, what happened? Did that click fire any tags or anything like that? If we click onto this, it'll just kind of give us a summary of everything that's happened up until this point. And so we can see that there are some tags that have been fired and some that have not been fired. So this first one here is Google Analytics. This is a container that I installed in a previous video. And then we have the Facebook base pixel, which is uh, what we installed first. We can see that this is successfully firing and we can see the conditions that were met that caused this to fire. So in this case, this was just a page view that caused the tag to fire. And then we have these two events or these two tags that were not fired. One of them's a Google Analytics event. And then the second one is the Facebook event for our lead conversion. So again, if we scroll down, we can see the different firing uh, triggers and the conditions that need to be met. In this case, we have page URL contains blog. And so that's the reason that this was not fired.
So that's what we want to see. Uh, we went to the home page, which is not where we wanted this event to fire. So that looks good. Okay, so now I've closed out of the debugger mode and I've reopened it, but I've put in the blog URL. So we can see that the debugger is now connected to this page. And now we can see that the tags that were fired include that Facebook pixel event. And that's because now the condition of page URL contains blog has now been met. And so that confirms that this is set up correctly. Now, if we go back to that page and I look at my uh, Google Chrome um, extension, Facebook pixel helper, I can actually see that with this green check mark here that that lead event was actually successfully fired as well. So there's a couple ways there that we can verify that the both the pixel is installed and that the events are firing the correct way. So that's pretty much all there is to installing your Facebook pixel and getting conversion events set up using Google Tag Manager. If you're interested in learning more about Tag Manager and how you can use it for your marketing campaigns or just for tracking events on your website, I've got a playlist in the description below with some more videos. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one.